general style when it comes to editing photos is, I would say, a little bit of a vintage dreamy vibe, but then with quite a lot of contrast and still like sort of realistic looking. Like I don't usually go like over the top, like with like crazy edits and crazy saturation. Like I still want to keep it quite sort of naturalistic if that's a good word to call it. Uh, but what I do tend to do is, yeah, I want to have like some kind of emotion and really think like, okay, what does this photo need? And what is the kind of emotion I want to evoke? One tip uh, I would definitely give you is to try to have reference images uh, and photos. So when you're sort of thinking, what is your editing style or what is the kind of vibe and mood you would like to have in your photos to find photos that you really like and respond to and then actually really like to look at them side by side with your own photos and try to analyze how have they gotten to that. Well, how was the light, you know, how contrasty is it, how exposed is it, is it warm, is it cold, what kind of colors, all those things will really help you to take your photos to that next level and sort of to look the way you want them to ultimately look. When I plan my photos, I usually think of colors. That is really one of the, for me, most important things, at least in photos. And usually I try to have a few key colors in my photos. Um, so usually maybe not more than two or three key colors. And so I try to find a background. I think of what is going to be so the main color of the background of my surrounding and then sort of think about okay what am I going to wear and how is that going to match with that are there going to be other elements and do I want to create a contrast or do I want to blend in uh, so for this photo for example I found this amazing yellow tree and then I have this idea of making a pumpkin bike so then I have the yellow tree and the pumpkins that sort of have both like this very warm yellowy orange tones and then for myself then I chose a white dress because that will then create contrast so I will be more visible in the photo <laughs> all right it is now day two of this editing video and I am about to start editing the photo we took yesterday um, and I've done the first sort of raw editing of uh, combining the photos together in Photoshop and if you'd like a tutorial on that then I'll link uh, to a video that I did before up here and you can check that out first or after this video uh, because now we're gonna go more in detail about the color grading and getting the vibe, the feel for it and not so much the whole Photoshop like combining photos together and all that. Okay so step one is I'm gonna open Lightroom and import the photo into Lightroom. And now Lightroom, um, you can have that for laptop or then also on your phone. It's basically sort of the same, it's just on the laptop you can see a little bit better what you're doing. But I think all the features are more or less the same. The first things I do is really, well first, sort of light is again the key here. So you really want to see like how much exposure you want to have in the photo and I tend to, I want sort of the details to be visible and so that it's sort of readable, <laughs> so it's not like too moody, but I also don't want to get like too crazy so that I lose all the details because you sort of overexpose it. So that's sort of like a fine line, I usually don't do too much. And then contrast is really, I think, like where you can get that kind of depth and bite and crunchiness to a photo. So that one is something I do kind of use quite a lot and then the little thing that I usually go uh, pretty early on uh, into is this little curve and I usually take up the shadows a little bit because I just feel like it gives it that kind of vintage -y, like a little bit faded look so I usually raise that up a little bit and then sort of tweak the rest of it to sort of fit um, so I still want to have sort of that contrasty but kind of faded look if that makes sense <laughs> so it's really about like finding that balance also um, the blacks uh, sometimes if I feel like it goes too much then maybe I'll take the blacks down a little bit or then raise them a little bit or in the shadows but really sort of my goal is to have a nice crunchy bite to the photo <laughs> the next thing that I really spend a lot of time obsessing about and sort of uh, trying to get really right is the colors and so you have the little color mixer there, you have the temperature, so how warm or how cold you want it to be, how blue or yellow. And um, for this photo, I want it to be quite sort of warm and nice because it's autumn now, so it kind of fits with the season. 
and um, I usually try to keep it again quite sort of natural not like too saturated uh, but still sort of really try to make the colors that I feel are important in the photo pop um, oh I'm getting my crampy my food <laughs> try to make them kind of pop so those I will try to tweak and sort of see that they yeah get their space in the photo <laughs> and then one thing I do also in the curve is I go to the one that is the blue one and usually I will raise like the blues of the shadows a little bit because I don't know I feel like it gives it yeah a little bit of kind of a mellow like a little bit melancholic vibe almost or, or it just does something to the shadows which is really nice so that's one um, of the curves that I usually use uh, not too much and sometimes it's the green one but usually it's the blue one that does a little bit gives it like that kind of a hint of a dreamy vibe Whew. oh my gosh I feel like I talk so fast <laughs> I don't know what's going on today <laughs> one thing I also pay a lot of attention to when I edit my photos is to really think where is the focus of the eye gonna be and where is it gonna land so I try to think like okay where do I need to have sort of quite a lot of exposure or like light and what is gonna be dark because I don't want it to be too cluttered and too distracting and all over the place so sometimes I will put a tiny little bit of vignette or use one of the brushes to sort of highlight something a little bit um, just to sort of give it a nice overall composition and make sure that the thing that is sort of the thing in the photo <laughs> that that is really in the focus and that it's not something else some weird little detail or some background thing that is taking the focus Another thing I usually also add in Lightroom is I put up the grain to usually around like 10 or 12 depending a little bit on and that's especially good if you have a photo that is quite flat otherwise uh, so for example against like just a white wall so putting a little grain in there will just give it a little bit more texture a little bit more interesting uh, to look at so that's something that you can play around with and then if it feels a little I don't know still like meh, doesn't really pop you can take some of the clarity up a little bit I've now edited the photo in Lightroom and I'm going to take it onto uh, my phone and then I'm gonna do a little bit of final tweaks in VSCO the reason I do this is because sometimes when I take the photo photo yes the photo <laughs> onto my phone and then I use an app called Unum not sure how you pronounce that, Unum, um, to sort of see how my feed will look. So I will sort of put the photos next to them so I can plan out the, how it will look on my Instagram feed. And sometimes the colors won't match at all and it looks like all weird, like suddenly maybe this new photo is way too green than the rest of them and then it just sort of throws off the balance. So then I will usually do the last tweaks in VSCO. So VSCO you can download for free, uh, but then there are quite a lot of filters that you can also buy and so the, my favorite filters that I use are called, let me see what they're called. Mm. I like the 05 one, because that one gives like a really nice vintage vibe. Usually I will never use, or very rarely, I will use a filter like to its max. I will maybe put a little bit, and I will also sort of go through the different filters just to sort of get a feel, like a very sort of extreme feel for the direction I want the photo to take. And then I also like, or often use the A5 one, the A6 one, no, it's the A5 one I use, and then there's also one that I used a lot for uh, a while that is the E8 one, and that's very kind of a little bit greenish and it's very sort of faded, like it really raises up those um, shadows, so it's quite extreme, but I, I quite like still like that. Yeah, I don't know, it has some kind of a retro feeling, almost like you've taken a photo with a Polaroid camera or something like that. <laughs> And the thing I usually do is um, maybe put slightly up the exposure on VSCO if I feel like it got a little too dark. Um, and again, I will usually actually end up turning down the saturation a little bit just because on the phone it sometimes looks much more saturated than on my laptop screen. And that will of course vary from screen to screen. Um, and then I might also add a little bit more grain, uh, go into the HSL sliders and tweak some of the colors if I feel like they're not really there where I want them to be yet. Um, but usually quite small things and quite small things I feel like can have like a pretty big impact on the final product. All right, and here is how the photo turned out. Uh, 
I thought uh, since this photo was pretty specific, I'll also show you some other photos uh, like the befores and afters, but this is usually sort of what I do to my photos. So I really concentrate on getting that contrast, that bite, crunchiness. <laughs> then I will usually, for that sort of vintage vibe, I will take up the shadows a little bit, add some blue in the shadows, um, then spend an excessive amount of time obsessing over the colors <laughs> and trying to really sort of focus on getting the main colors to pop nicely. Uh, and yeah, usually I always do first in Lightroom and then in VSCO. Um, yeah, so that's it really. And then of course, every photo is different, requires different treatments, you know, they all deserve that. Um, so yeah, that is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, come hang out or say hi over at Kutovakika on Instagram and check out more of my photos. Um, also, if you haven't subscribed already, then why don't you? <laughs> and leave a thumbs up so I know that you like this video and would like to see more of this kind of stuff. Also, let me know what kind of editing style do you have for your photos or what is the style that would, you'd like to have. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks, bye! Hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello.